Welcome to the Weekly Bat. This week, we are thrilled to share that the Bat Project subreddit recently surpassed 40,000 members. Yes, it was just over a year ago that we celebrated 25K. We are both amazed and grateful at the growth from then to now. And we couldn't be happier about the community we've built and will continue to build together. Together, we're showing the world how Bat and Brave are helping to create a better internet, where users are in control of their experience, their data, and where their attention is fairly priced and, of course, rewarded. So yes, thank you for being on this ride with us. I think we've got a community of really great folks here, and the community is what makes my job so much fun. So thank you so much for that, and I think we should have a Brave Together party to celebrate. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments, maybe next week. Up next, we've got some more exciting news. Verified Uphold Wallets withdrawals on Android are coming next week in version 1.10. Here's everything you need to know. Dear Brave and Bat community, with a new app upgrade, V1.10, later this week, we are excited to announce that Android will be supporting user wallets or verified wallets. Verified user wallets on Android will allow Brave Android users to transfer and sync their Brave Rewards bat balances with an Uphold account. Remember, you do not need to use this functionality in order to continue to use Brave Rewards. Up next, we have some more exciting news. The Daily Chain reports on a recent Brave partnership. Brave launches limited edition browser in collaboration with K-pop's BTS. Yes, guys, you heard that correctly. BTS, the global K-pop phenomenon. If you don't know BTS, you need to go to YouTube right now, type in BTS, and just have a gander at how many views these guys' music videos get. It's insane. And they make really good music too, so you should listen. Anyway, back to the Daily Chain article. The Brave browser has given the crypto industry a great deal of exposure by taking cryptocurrencies to the screens of millions of Brave users. Now, the company is taking a giant leap with its recent partnership with Korean pop group BTS and popular esports team Rush Gaming to provide a limited edition release of its browser for residents of Japan. Japan is one of the world's biggest crypto and blockchain hotspots. The collaboration with BTS, aka the Bangtan Boys, a boy band with fans all over the globe, will be a major boost for the browser and the crypto industry as well. This is the first known collaboration between a privacy-based browser like Brave and a popular pop band. Reported by local news outlet Nikkei, the collaborations will focus on finding a new touchpoint between idols and fans. The limited edition browser will also allow fans to earn points by watching ads to support Rush Gaming's esports team. Up next, we have an official update from the team on partner referral codes in Brave suggested sites. Over the weekend, one of our users noticed that typing Binance.us into Brave's address bar added an affiliate code to the end of the address, commonly called a URL, that was typed in. The bad news is that we made a mistake when adding affiliate codes and logic using them to suggest alternative completions shown in the dropdown under the address bar. The error was adding the affiliate code to the default completion, where you go if you hit the enter or return key, for a smaller set of URLs instead of only the suggested alternative completions that users must pick manually. We apologize to our users for the error we made when adding affiliate codes to suggest alternative completions shown in the dropdown under the address bar. This is now fixed and a just released desktop version, 1.9.80, addresses the issue. Up next, we have an update on Brave Nightly. As of this week, Brave Nightly is now available for download on the Google Play Store. Get changes within a day of when they are developed. If you are considering downloading Brave Nightly, please note that Nightly is our testing and development version of Brave. The releases are updated every night and may contain bugs that can result in data loss. Nightly automatically sends us crash reports when things go wrong, but if you aren't cool with that, you might want to stick to release or beta. Up next, Brave's chief policy officer, Dr. Johnny Ryan, gives a keynote at Procter & Gamble about how advertisers should adapt to the privacy-first future. 
Johnny is a compelling presenter, and he makes a compelling case, if we do say so ourselves, so don't miss that one. Up next, important changes to the BRAVE referral program. Program halted in China, Indonesia, Russia, Ukraine, and Vietnam. New requirements to protect legitimate creators. Since BRAVE's beginning, our community has been a key engine for global growth. We are privileged to have such a passionate and dedicated user base that actively endorses and recommends BRAVE. The BRAVE referral program has been an essential part of that growth. Originally, the referral program was to be capped at $1 million USD in BAT equivalent, but has now done several times that amount. The ability for Brave supporters to share the browser directly has led to unprecedented success, helping grow the Brave user base to more than 15 million monthly active users worldwide. We take this opportunity to thank all the referrers who've participated. The continued success of the referral program brings new challenges that need to be addressed. In the past few months, we have detected fraudulent activities concentrated in a small set of regions. We caught this fraudulent activity before any BAT was paid out, but in order to ensure the referral program continues for legitimate BRAVE referrers, we have to take action. After careful analysis, we have isolated a high number of fraudulent referrers in specific countries. Effective Thursday, June 11, 2020, the referral program will be put on hold for new creators in the following countries. China, Indonesia, Russia, Ukraine, and Vietnam. These changes are specific to the referral program and will be applicable to existing creators as well. So we urge creators in these regions to halt their referral campaigns. This week in Sponsored Images. This week, find images from Upland, BlockFi, and Tezos in Brave's new tab page. You're going to want to check out the weekly BAT blog post this week because we included some reactions from the community and staff to Upland's campaign. Let me just say this. If the aim was shock value, they definitely nailed it. Buzzcut Llama for the win. Our growing list of new tab page sponsors includes Verizon, PayPal, Newegg, Western Digital, Chipotle, Khan Academy, Crypto.com, and more. Brave Creator Spotlight, in partnership with Everipedia. Our first featured creator of the week is Romeo Lacoste. He is a tattoo artist and YouTuber. Montreal-born tattoo artist Romeo Lacoste has inked a number of A-list celebs, including Justin Bieber and Ariana Grande, as well as YouTube stars The Dolan Twins, Jack and Jack, Cayenne and JC, and Pentatonix. Romeo is also a contestant on Best Inc. Season 3, which aired worldwide and has been featured in multiple international magazines. Check out his YouTube channel for a window into his work. If you like what you see, you can book a tattoo appointment with him via his website, romeolacoste.com. Our second featured creator of the week is also very exciting. They are a YouTube channel called Chill Nation. Are you looking for music that you can relax and vibe to? Well, 9 million subscribers agree. Chill Nation has you covered. Chill Nation is the second official channel of Trap Nation. At Chill Nation, they upload more chill and laid-back tracks. Lots of instrumentals or kind of dreamy, mellow vocals. I've personally been listening to Chill Nation and Trap Nation and a few of their other channels, actually, since my uni days. So it's really cool to see them verified. Trap Nation is verified as well, guys. So if you like them, check them out and send them a tip. You can find links to both creators' YouTube channels and Everipedia entries, of course, in the weekly BAT blog post. Client Updates This week, the Desktop Nightly channel progressed to version 1.12.21. The Desktop Dev channel progressed to version 1.11.62. The Desktop Beta channel progressed to version 1.11.61. And the Desktop Release channel progressed to version 1.9.80. Just a friendly reminder to please be sure to keep your Brave browser updated to the latest version at all times. This will allow you to stay ahead of bugs and benefit from all the latest updates and fixes. To update your Brave browser on desktop, go to Brave colon slash slash help. If you are on mobile and you don't already receive updates automatically, you can manually update your Brave browser app from the App Store. Brave Team Tweets Someone in the community tweeted, 
I use Brave on my laptop and mobile, but having them linked would be really helpful. Our VP of Engineering, Brian Clifton, replied, Speaking of Brave Sync version 2, there's great progress being made. Basically, all of the types of data supported in Chromium, like bookmarks, passwords, extensions, work as expected too. He goes on to tag his team members and congratulate them on their awesome work, and then adds, we're targeting the 1.12 release, which is due out in the release channel on August 4th. Brave CTO Brian Bondi tweets, I'm so excited to see Brave Nightly for Android published on the Play Store. Get changes within a day from when they were developed. And then he links the GitHub repo where you can report issues if you find any. Brave's chief of policy, Johnny Ryan, tweets, Now, Brave's data on GDPR enforcement capacity across the EU is available in Japanese. Someone in the community asked about the different ways to use BAT. And Luke Mulks, director of BizDev, replied, We have existing redemption options recently released from our partnership with the TAP Network for people to redeem earned BAT at brave.tapnetwork.io. Also, the Turnio block card recently added BAT for secondary payment rail use at getblockcard.com. Uphold did something similar. We also began work with Origin, who is a challenger to Shopify with crypto, on exploring additional ways to use earned BAT for e-commerce. There is a big focus right now on establishing additional utility for BAT, inside and outside of Brave. BAT and Brave in the news. This piece is by Coinfomania. Brave browser CEO teases YouTube killer, but it's not what you think. In response to a question about when the Brave browser will create a, quote, YouTube killer, Brendan Eich, CEO and co-founder of the blockchain-powered browser, said, SOON in all caps, leaving users curious about the development. Eich further revealed that plans are already underway to add the new feature to the privacy-oriented web browser. He said, I'm starting with design, but we have non-front-end pieces already built. This comes as great news to users of the web browser, with wild speculations as to how the alternative will work and the features that'll be made available on it for both advertisers and users. Providing more information about the upcoming feature, the CEO further explained that it will not be a replacement for YouTube service. Rather, they aim to take down the app in browser. Not a YouTube service. We aim to kill the app in browser. Also, we do not want to run a social network or login system. But the browser can disintermediate and mash up content, so the app approach can ideally use YouTube just for storage and high QoS routing, he said. News you should know. This piece is from Wired. Twitter's newest trick relies on tracking more of your clicks. Twitter introduced a new feature Wednesday that prompts users to read links to articles before sharing them. When users try to post links without opening them, a message appears saying, headlines don't tell the full story. Want to read this before retweeting? Limited to only Android users for now, the new feature is part of a series of overhauls, including fact-checking tweets from President Trump, the company is making to support healthy conversations. It's easy for links slash articles to go viral on Twitter, product lead Kayvon Bakepour retweeted alongside the announcement. This can be powerful, but sometimes dangerous, especially if people haven't read the content they're spreading. But making the feature work requires a level of tracking and risk that users likely aren't aware of. Aram Zucker Schraff, an ad tech engineer, detailed in a Twitter thread that the platform now keeps tabs on all of the links users click, complete with a URL and timestamp. This next piece is by TechCrunch. How to decode a data breach notice. Over the years, I've seen hundreds, probably thousands, of data breach notifications warning that a company's data was lost, stolen, or left online for anyone to grab. Most of them look largely the same. It's my job to decode what they actually mean for the victims whose information is put at risk. Data breach notifications are meant to tell you what happened, when, and what the impact may have on you. You've probably already seen a few this year. That's because most U.S. states have laws that compel companies to publicly disclose security incidents, like a data breach, as soon as possible. Europe's rules are stricter, and fines can be a common occurrence if breaches aren't disclosed. But data breach notifications have been an all-too-regular exercise in crisis communications. These notices increasingly try to deflect blame, obfuscate important details, and omit important facts. 
After all, it's in a company's best interest to keep the stock markets happy, investors satisfied, and regulators off their backs. Why would it want to say anything to the contrary? The next time you get a data breach notification, read between the lines. By knowing the common BS lines to avoid, you can understand the questions you need to ask. Roaring fans. Mr. Majestic tweets, Sweet! Just received my brave swag right before heading to work. Can't wait to try them on when I get home. Thanks to Bat Community for such a generous prize package. That's a wrap for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you would like to read the full stories whose headlines we cover on the podcast, be sure to read the accompanying Weekly Bat blog post. You can find that on batcommunity.org always. Or if you're listening on YouTube, check the description box below the video for a link. And if you're listening on a podcast app or player, check the show notes. Thank you for listening. If you like these podcasts, be sure to follow or subscribe to stay up to date with the Bat Community.